Christy Mallow. Um, we founded Farm to Market Hemp about 18 months ago in anticipation of the hemp laws changing in Texas. And I also run national sales for a um, packaging company. So we just launched Canna Sundries um, as a division of Martini Incentive. So uh, we do all the packaging as well. I'm Dahlia Collada. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, my background is in product development and brand management. And more recently, in the last eight and a half years or so, I started a manufacturing business where we custom formulate topicals for the CBD and hemp industry, where we work with you directly to create a formula that's appropriate for your application and customer. And you buy it by the gallon, you add your own CBD or whatever else and create your own brand with it. Um, so we work closely with uh, hemp farmers and processors. with companies in the U.S. that want to get their product lines into Latin America. So we also bring all different types of CBD products um, to Co Costa Rica and Colombia. Now in Costa Rica at the moment, they're working on passing the bill, so we're working with Congress to do that. Okay. And Mr. Carlos Alvarado, thank you so much. Uh, no, Carlos Romero. So, Mr. Well, Carlos Romero. Uh, I'm a CEO of Colombia Hemp International. I have had experience with hemp uh, since um, uh, 2016 in uh, Colorado, where I began my career in logistics. And uh, hopefully I can bring to the meeting today some experience of that, how to sell it, and the many risks that we have until today of exporting interstate or out of the country. Much. So this is our esteemed panel today. Uh, hold your questions to the end if you don't mind. If you have a <coughs> your CBD sales and prepare for the next year. So we'll start with a per with my friend on the left here and he'll give us some tips on. Uh, Again, I'm Christy. Just by show of hands, real quick, I'd love to know who we're talking to. Thank you. I was going to ask you to do that. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, just by a show of hands, um, who owns a CBD store retail outlet? Okay, good. And then who, is there anybody in the room that's looking to get started in the CBD industry and is just here to kind of check out to get started? Okay, just real quick, by show of hands, what other um, people are represented here too? Do we have like farmers? Awesome, love our farmers. Um, Holler out, what else, do you, uh, what else do you do out there that hasn't been represented, just so we know, because we want to make sure and hit the topics you care about. Payment processing. Payment processing, okay. What else we got? Just online sales. Online sales, okay. Cool. All right, anybody else want to speak up? Okay, cool, if you have any specific questions, as she said, we'll take those, but it's good to know who our audience is. So um, we really look at it like um, there are so many aspects to increasing your sales and so I know that we cover the gambit from product development from the farm through the ingredients that are paired with products, um, through the packaging lens, back through the marketing and um, especially specific to online sales, how to capture those customers. And so we can talk through a little bit of those segments for you today. Dahlia, what was the question again? <laughs> A more conversational, I like Q&A style. I think Q&A style is a good way. One thing to know that, you know, we have, we are representing Texans. We are Texans. They're in Galveston, Houston. Richmond, Houston, Fulcher area, and Austin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, shoot away. What, okay. who is here from uh, Houston? Who is in Houston? Yeah, if you're going to talk to me, ask me questions, because, I mean, I can just talk all day long about yeah. something random. So, uh, do you have something specific, anything about product development? Yes, sir. Yeah.
Yeah. Um, so that would be one Sure, I love that question. So my background, I've had 20 plus years of doing marketing and product development. And I will say my favorite is B2B. B2C is really, really hard. But B2B is so much easier. The best thing you could do, believe it or not, is get yourself on LinkedIn and start connecting with people who you think are your, is your customer, the decision maker. Not just an admin person or somebody that is kind of not who you want. You want to go, be, you only have so much time in the day. Be very strategic about how you use your energy, right? Go on LinkedIn. It's the easiest way. Find your companies. Do your research. And connect. And if you can't connect and they don't agree, then go find the CFO or somebody else that's in product development or purchasing. That's the best way to get in to start your conversation with a B2B person. Find out what their interests are. When you go on LinkedIn and you go connect with somebody, don't just connect and then stay mute. Introduce yourself. Don't try to push or sell something because I'm going to delete you if you try to sell me something without even saying hi. So try to create a relationship with people because that's how people are going to remember you when it comes time to make a decision to purchase. They might not be ready to purchase today, but they may six months from now. How are you, what is your plan for developing a relationship with somebody so that come six months from now, oh, Joe, I remember Joe, he's cool. He wrote me a handwritten note. Like who does that anymore? You know, so think about creative ways. Think old school, get, a, get away from technology, write a thank you card, like handwrite it, come on. Um, so things like that, that can make, make a personal, um, it's kind of like applying for a job and you got to make yourself stand out on a resume. It's the same thing. How can you differentiate yourself and create a memorable experience with that buyer so that they can remember you later on? It's the same thing when you're doing B2C. You're creating brand recognition and loyalty with your customer. So you want to keep that momentum going um, till when they're ready to purchase something. They're like, oh, man, I've heard that name like 99 times. That's why I bought from them right? So think about creative ways to build relationships because that's how you're going to get into the B2B audience. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that real quick, um, you know, figure out what they need and help them solve a problem and incorporate your product into that solution or get brownie points by solving that problem and then yeah. say, hey, you know, I am so glad that that worked out for you. And then let's see what we can do. I'm really trying to move this what, what is your top product that you'd like to get into the stores right now? Like what? Pictures, uh, bath bombs, yeah. a variety of, and then I'd like to just go to Florida and just get 50 stores. Yes. In, you know, a good place in Florida. Mm -hmm. So what's your strategy to do that? Find out where they're going and show up there and then contact them before you go. Just like here, the expo here, I'm not exhibiting, but I contacted every single exhibitor and said, hey, I'm going to be coming to the show. You interested in meeting? At least they heard my name. She already sold some product on the floor, by the way. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. I think they're supposed to be selling us something, but you sold something yeah, to someone. It's, re it's relationship, and what she said is correct. No matter what industry you're in, you're there to solve a problem. You have yellow teeth. Did you know that? No. Well, you need this whitening toothpaste. It's that. It's like that, where you've, you help them realize what their problem is, and then you go in with the solution, right? And, and that's it's quite simple. For me, it's... You don't want to sit there and make product in your lab. You're supposed to be, you know, processing and growing. Who the heck wants to, why do you want to spend operational expense making product in a lab and buying all this raw? My pitch, because I'm solving your problem. You have to think about what is the problem that you're trying to solve. So she was right on with that. Yeah. I've got one more to follow up on mine. I'm done. Yeah. It's going to be very expensive. It's going to be very expensive. Um, I would say this. There, I forget the name of the book. There's a book out there. But you think about when you're approaching like a sales force out there, think about a franchise concept where, you know, if you go to a Chick-fil-A, you're going to get treated the same way at every single Chick-fil-A. Why? Because they have a brand standard and they have a protocol and an SOP on what does somebody do when they ask for extra ketchup? Well, you know, you can only give out two or thank you very much or whatever it is. So make sure that if you're going to do that, it's fine. It's cool. You have to be very strategic on your marketing, on your placement of all that. 
but make sure that you're, everyone is saying this the right thing the, at the right time. You might even want to create a conversation flow. Like if this question's asked, this is what you say. So everyone is consistent in the communication because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, it's one brand that they're representing and they need to be very prepared. If you don't prepare them, you're going to fail. And I would honestly say hire one rep in one place and train them well and get 10 reps worth of business because if you have a zero compensation, 1099 only plan, that's about how much attention some rep that's going to come on is going to give it. Yeah, I want to add to that. Oh, it is working. Thank God. I want to add to that. I completely agree with what Dalia is saying. Um, obviously, it's important how you connect to your customer or the business that you're going to be working with. So if it's a customer and it's B2C, I'd say one of the uh, biggest challenges right now is the education. It's educating people. For example, the other day I was speaking to a hairdresser who told me a lot of people approached me about products with CBD, products with hemp, but it's, it's a drug, so I don't want to use it. She's not educated. If your business can be a business that educates, that gives back, that connects with your customer, that connects with the business, that creates that connection, it doesn't matter how pretty your brand looks, they're gonna keep coming back for you. So I suggest all the time uh, blogging. If you have a good looking website, have a blog. Tell them what you're doing. Um, give back, you know, like give them education, give them facts. All of these things really help you to connect with the business that you're trying to work with, B2B, or the customer, especially the customers. So I think if we can get past this challenge as a community in the industry, you know, I think that's going to help a lot of different businesses. Um, and then also uh, to some of the emerging markets, I'd suggest, uh, for example, uh, in Costa Rica right now, we're working to with Congress to make sure that we can push the bill so they can start to grow. And then shortly afterwards, they're going to start to sell products. You might want to look into some countries that are just beginning, you know, to expand uh, your brand over there and to connect over there and also to increase your sales. So, I have to add, we are doing a great disservice to small business if we think that we're going to be the ones to come out with the next tincture, throw it on an e-commerce site and make a million dollars. I'll save you a whole bunch of time. Seen on the market, my stores won't even look at another tincture yeah. skew. You better, better differential yourself from the beginning. And not only the brand, is, that's potential, but your logistics. And also be very clear on what type of demographic that you're targeting. You know, I mean, if it's pharmaceutical CBD, you know, you immediately can start to subcategorize who you want to target. So be very specific on that because that will really help when you're getting your message across and put a lot of effort into that. I just want to say from the real estate perspective, that's my background, you really want to look at the location, who you're either partnering with, check the traffic flows, if you are selling to a store, see what side of the road it is. If, if you can work with a convenience store owner who has 70 stores, that's a better place than a one mom and pop place that just has one location. Also have a display. I've worked so many times with people who don't have a display. Convenience stores is going to ask you, hire a professional, whoever, to get a display in place for your product. Think about that, and that's, I think, your expertise. If you're yeah, well, about that. That's what I love about what you're saying is that if you can package your product and you can maintain all of that um, profit, getting it all the way from the plant to shelf ready, and you're presenting it to a store shelf ready, she's spot on. They want to be able to take what you hand them, rip the top off of that box. They will give you the space. And believe me also, uh, just to follow on from what she was saying, it really is important, every part of the process of sales as to how you're gonna get that product across to your customer. And that starts with the seed, the farming, was it organic, where was it, the country, uh, to the actual product itself, what it contains, and then also the branding and the packaging, if you can do all of those things and connect with your customer and give back, I mean, you, you really, you'll be hitting really high marks in this industry. 
one of one of the things that I really liked about what Katrina said, and I think it's really important, regardless of what industry you're in, is you need to become a really good storyteller. Um, my brother is in the wine industry, and he was telling me, oh, this is a blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, what's that? I said, you got to tell me a story. Tell me where it came from. Uh, there was an old man once upon a time. He had a goat, and, you know, and he grew some farms, and then the goat ate a grape, and he got drunk. And like, tell me a story, because now I'll remember that. So what's the story you're going to tell about your products? So if you're going to sell, like, a, you know, five products, come up with a story. Tell me a story. I have a product and that I made that I have sell on my, on my retail side but it's for pain well what's how did you come up with that well I have I can't walk I have really bad tendonitis and I fell on you know whatever and I discovered this natural plant based everything I make has a story to it what's your story and if you're thinking about um, creating a brand from scratch you need to come up with a central theme Katrina mentioned this too Um, one thing that I really like uh, there's some companies in this industry that focus on very targeted audience right pregnant women um athletes, you know, whatever, come up with what your central audience and really just envelop that and focus on that. You're going to get tempted to go do this over here with a tincture or this over here with, you know, a topical, but you really need to say, look, for me as a business owner, being strategic, I need to focus on this and I won't consider anything else. You got to tell yourself from that beginning. And it's ongoing, you know, you're never going to stop. This isn't just because you're starting out, you have to gain your audience. The moment that you get your audience, some people are going to drop off, they're going to go away, they're going to see other brands and products. So you constantly have to engage. That's why I say the majority of the money that you're spending in your operating costs need to go back into how you are connecting with your audience, how you're educating them, how you're making them feel like they're part of your brand, part of your community. I can't stress how important this is because if you leave this crucial thing out you're just going to be another product among many you know what is it that made apple so special you know why is it that you look sometimes at apple and you're like i don't know what it is but i just like it it's not the logo it's not the way that it looks although these things are important it's about the type of brand that they created that connect with the people it's the feeling that you get, you know. So you really need to focus on on these type of things to differentiate yourself mm-hmm. from the masses in the market. And don't get me wrong, packaging and branding and everything else after that is extremely crucial. Okay, so hold on, hold on. I see you about to jump in. You're yeah. this poor man is. I'm learning for sure. No, I I, I have a message. If if uh, this is a na- nascent uh, industry, it's 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 not going to turn around. And as marketing people, salespeople, you are forced, obligated, to create that new spectrum for science, for all the agricultural people that are there. You are the ones who are going to tell us what to do next, because you are looking at the customer day by day, anticipate their needs, anticipate what they need. I, a year ago, I was stating to my wife here, you're gonna bath with everything with CBD. (laughs) Well, guess what? The other day we saw in HEB toothpaste. (laughs) CBD and toothpaste. So you have to anticipate it, and it's not only for, for, Sick people, it's not, it's for everybody. CBD is in our body. We just yeah. came from a conference. It's in our body, it's, 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 it's our needs. So, so the, you are the principal force that brings everything backwards for the industry. If you tell us what is the public needing. Yeah. So. And your grandkids will know that. So uh, if you do correctly, and uh, you're going to have millions of obstacles. The law, I mean, just ship some CBD from Colorado to Texas two years ago. Get me Whoa, started. it's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. It's a big problem. So and so banking also is another issue, no, 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 um, no. but you can get around that too. So we have a 
us are in the house, apparently, so he can help you with that. All so right. So the next question, and next point to consider, I'm going to ask you this question uh, to everybody go around and say that. What are some of the key business principles or some of the operational issues you want to let our audience know that's a very important, like payment processing, like banking? Anything else? Yeah. As far as payment processing, other than this fine gentleman's solution, I've used Chronic Pay. They make you go through a bunch of steps in the beginning, but you're not going to get shut down. I personally have chosen for our website to not accept online payments. Uh, we're B2B, and we can shoot an invoice out, and we can, you know, you can zelly my business account if that makes you feel better. But we just don't want that exposure online. We don't want to spend the time or the energy on that. We've got too many products that we want to make available to people and get exposure for that we don't want to be worrying about. Everybody is going to change in this country about CBD. And it really is up to the people in this room here to watch this conference, obviously, in some form or fashion you're selling, you know, and it really is up to the people in this room to be a part of that change, you know. To fiber also. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an industry that hasn't really even been touched upon. I wanted to bring it up because it's maybe a good idea for some of you guys in the room. But that industry covers a multitude of industries. You're talking about textile, you're talking about the construction industry, you're talking about uh, oil and gas industry, the paper, uh, the shoes. So, you know, his shoes are made of hemp. hemp okay. shoes? All right, cool. Look at that. The bag and the hemp shoes. So, so people are just getting into this. Uh, fiber is going to be, I believe, a very, very profitable industry because the manufacturers and producers are going to okay. save, you know, 20, 30 percent on the cost, whereas they use nylon before for clothes. They're going to use hemp fiber now for clothes, you know, and then it grows in much a bigger quantity. So these are uh, some of the markets that are still untapped. And especially being in Texas is why I think it's really important, you know, where you have a lot of, a, a bit, we have a big working community, you know, we're in the construction industry a lot. Spain are uh, formulating uh, hemp and uh, graphene uh, to create um, uh, the solar power, the windmills. So this is a very big contract for them they're working on. This can be applied in the US. I mean, we're you know one of the yeah, biggest, fastest yeah, yeah. na moving nations in the world. You know, so that's one to think about. We'll also touch on regulation in a minute, but go ahead. Um, I will say, because I don't know anything about banking, but I'm not good at that stuff. But um, what I will say is if you're trying to do an online store and trying to get your product out, I know advertising is really difficult for CBD and Here's my solution to you. Find a product that you can make that doesn't contain any of those things. Advertise it. Make it your star student, okay? Advertise that and bring people into your store that way. Um, that's also a word game with the FDA because I'm involved with, I'm, I'm registered as a drug manufacturer with the FDA, so I know all about the word games, okay? Um, so find some really creative keywords. You go buy a book on like fun words or, uh, there's actually two books that I recommend if you're looking for words. Um, ways to say blue that's there um, so what I would encourage you to do is find um, a product that you can sell without any issues to drive people to your site how many of you live in Houston or yeah you guys have heard of gallery furniture what do they advertise mattresses do they ever advertise a sofa what kind of mattress do they advertise Tempur-Pedic why It's the answer. It the answer is it's the most expensive product that they sell, 
And if you come and they're doing, that's all they've advertised for the last 20 years is this one mattress. They're not advertising anything else. Why? Because they want you to be curious. What the heck is this damn mattress everybody's talking about? So you go sit on the mattress, but you're not going to buy the most expensive thing in the store. You're going to buy a couch, a chair, a pillow, whatever. But so, if you can afford that mattress, you hell can afford yeah. the yeah. mattress. I could use a mattress. Anyway, I'm not going to buy that. But um, the whole idea here is it's a marketing strategy, right? So come up with your product, create a story around it pull people into that and then oh look they also got this hmm. and I believe it or not I have a lot of customers that work with me because they want a product that does not contain CBD just to pull in their products the uh, pull in the customers to buy those products so find your star student okay and then get creative with your marketing um, you might need to get a marketing strategist get your social media all around that one product and bring people to your site Excellent. yeah absolutely Thanks. I so, agree. Uh, let's talk about uh, regulation. So we do know that in Texas, we can start growing hemp as of May. Uh, the Texas Department of Agriculture got more than 1,500 applicants, and there's a lot of growers in Texas right now. Who is a grower here? Got a few in the middle, right? A couple of farmers. How many farmers? We know. Like Kansas. Oh, I that's okay. Oh, okay. I would like to growers. urge yeah. everybody. Pennsylvania. Colorado. Pennsylvania. Colorado. 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 Cool. Go to the Texas Department of Agriculture page, <coughs> research how to become a grower. It's not gonna cost you more than $200, but once you get registered the first year, when you start growing next year, if you do, your insurance is gonna be, you, you're gonna have a better deal on insurance. So think about your insurance. This is gonna yeah. be very critical, but we know that is from other states. I went to Kansas, to Kentucky last year. Kentucky is very regulated. They do CBD. Very conservative, just like Texas. Some of the lessons was about banking, payment, insurance. Get to know your local officials. If you're in the city, in a county, make a friend right now. Don't wait until you start growing. Get to know your county commissioners, because eventually it's going to help you with your tax deductions, agricultural exemptions. Yeah. Join Rents. possibly Texas Hemp Industries Association. I represent them too. Texas AJA. Or go to their Facebook page, you don't have to pay anything, just join the page. Get educated on what's coming down the pipe. In, in another country with the state, with the country, senators, uh, Costa Rica, and, mm -hmm. and you have to educate them at th this point. And here in Texas, we have to educate them too. But you have to become acquaintance, you have to go to their office, you have to promote the product, and you have to let them know that this is not the devil. Yeah. This is not the devil. This is a product, a wonderful product, for many reasons. Uh, Katrina touched uh, the scope of uh, uh, fiber. I mean, if you enter uh, Texas Department of Agriculture for fiber, it has many, many uh, uh, venues for you because they do that as well with other products of agriculture for fiber. So Read the laws like uh, the, uh, Kentucky, Mr. McConnell has, has his laws. We have his, our laws here in Texas. Yeah, too. and just to add to that, every state is different. Obviously, um, Texas is going to continue to change the law and update the law so we can do more and more things. But as far as your company, I would like to make a suggestion. Uh, it's always good to have one or two very well-known legal experts in the industry, even just as an advisor, compliance advisors. So as salespeople and as a company, you know exactly what's going on and you keep up to date with it. Because we know that you all have businesses to follow all of the regulation too, you know, it's it's challenging. But, but know your stuff, it's important because sometimes even if you put the wrong word on a website, <laughs> that's it, no, you're in a problem. And, so. and, 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 and it's part of the story that Dahlia was saying. It's part of the story. If you know the law very well, you can state your story to the public because you are who represents us. You are, at the end, it's gonna sell our product no matter where the full screen uh, comes from, you know, full spectrum comes from. If it comes from 
uh, Kentucky or, or Kansas or, or California or Texas, uh, you are at, at the end of the line and you are in contact with your customers. So you have to state with good reasons and facts the compliance of this. Trans transparency is key. Diane, just be just be very you know clear. This industry is highly challenging and will be highly regulated. So you really need to know all your stuff. Um, I'd like your comment on this. Um, I think it's really important to be transparent with your customer. Don't try to hide stuff. If you're not showing ingredients, you're insulting me, because I'm an intelligent, educated consumer, and I look at some people's stuff in the industry. And I'm like. Why aren't you showing your ingredients? I'm not going to buy anything from you because I feel like you're hiding something. Don't hide anything from me. Be transparent. One thing, too, I think you have an opportunity to do to get your name out, if you're especially if you're having a hard time with like doing online um, advertising, is start videos. Get yourself an Instagram account. Do some live video chat. Hey, look at this product I saw. Let's talk about what's in. The, let's talk about the ingredients. Katrina. I'm old, but someone said TikTok's a thing. Oh, well, I don't know anything. And, and I'm not just that old. to add but to that, with videos, which is fantastic, one business that I have before did really well with that. Uh, with videos, make sure you get your audience involved and on the videos. Yeah, I like to do make a it about them. If you're on social media, as an example, if you're on Facebook or Instagram and you have followers, look into them, see what they see what they're involved with. If it's their birthday, make a video about them. You know, really get involved yeah, with Yeah, get your them community. on video, have them promote yeah. your brand. Make them feel special and then have them go out and promote your brand for you. Quick question, is there any store owners here? Yeah. Yeah. So store owners, is there any people who actually make products that's trying to sell to store owners? Okay, well look around, who are the store owners? Talk to them. <laughs> You guys after are all in the same room. That's a I really, after this, I really want to challenge you. Go to every single booth. Don't, don't not go. Pick up their cards and follow up. Because this is our Texas market. We're here. This is your prime opportunity. Okay? And I feel like there's other sales challenges out there. So I'd love some more questions from some folks who are looking for real life um, solutions to whatever they're Yep. Doing. My, my dog is hemp. That's yeah. great. My dog is him. Yeah, we have a dog called uh, hemp. Like we laugh all the time, but if, you should know who I am by the time you call. It's not hard to find on, yeah. on websites and stuff. And they were absolutely right. Know what you can do for someone. You know, like people will be like, oh, I, 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 we get this all the time. I saw your website, and I really think we could work together. And I'm like, well, that's fine because you didn't read anything on the website if you think that we, you know, like that's what we're looking for. If you have something and it's really good, we'll listen. But you need to know who we are and what we need ahead of time. So that's a really good deal. What store are you with? Just tell everybody. Sacredly. 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 Okay, so if you're trying to pitch the sacred leaf, there he is. <laughs> are you exhibiting? Yes, there. So we got yes. We're growing CBD. Could you speak up a little bit? So we're growing CBD. There's, there's a variety of products, and there's a six six shelves in the convenience store or in the vape shop or wherever it might be. Where, what's the top number one seller? Maybe we can find out tasty. I mean, right now, for us, I mean, anything that's Delta 8, yeah. I mean, just because everything's swinging, um, Delta 8's crazy, you know. Um. Okay, that's not people that smoke in a college town. Huh. I mean, yeah, you know, you're looking at topicals and some of uh, Yeah. Cars. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're in a college town or somewhere where they're younger, like, right now, that's mostly what we're getting in our actual stores because the people that are at high risk are coming to Your perspective, what I've been getting asked, I've, I notice trends as you know, as things go, I, I see trends. What I'm seeing a lot of are getting requests is anti aging, skincare regime, um, you know, moisturizers, serums, lip balms, tinted makeup, things like that. Um, he's saying sunscreen, yeah. So there's a uh, more into the personal care area, you're gonna start seeing that expand. Just this past week, I, I saw that Playboy created their own personal care, you know. 
lubricants and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't know that. But it's all topicals. So, you know, that's kind of like what, what I'm seeing because that's what I'm getting requested by, you know, re requested for. Yeah. Well, it's more normalized too, right? Yeah. yeah, more normalized. As it becomes more normalized, then the more products they're going to expect to see like shampoo. Yep. producer if you're going to be doing uh, um, fiber or any other varietals not just CBD think about creating business relationships with companies buyers uh, join different associations that have those relationships That's a good point go to LinkedIn establish that relationship not just for the stores I mean if you're producing a product yes but if you're thinking about selling your flour for CBD, CBG, fiber, whatever. Establish those relationships now. Yeah. Don't and wait until you harvest. Go into new industries, too. Why are we guys saturate the same industry? Exactly <laughs> what I was saying yeah. uh, earlier on about the fiber market. Yeah. We were in Texas, you know? I mean, we can sell that stuff. <laughs> Let, and let's get into it. Go to a really? fitness expo and sell something, you know? Re remember that uh, THC is very soon be available in here in Texas. So anticipate that, anticipate that. You guys know all the dispensaries in California and Oregon and in, in Colorado. You're gonna have that here very soon, very soon. So anticipate to that process because it's coming. I mean. Speaking of the regulations that we talked about, establish relationships with labs, good lab companies. Labs that are verified. Yep. There's a bunch of them here yep. today. Yep. Sante Laboratories. There's a lot of them yep. out there. Research them. It's easy to find information online. Research them. Establish those relationships for your certificates of analysis. In order, logistics companies find the logi who's going to be yep. transporting your stuff. You we we can do the transporting too. Logistics. Yeah, we do logistics. <laughs> TexasAggregateSolutions.com. Well, this is going to help you as well as later on. It wants to becomes legal you have a network yeah. I, I want to add to that the whole testing thing is really critical for educated consumers people ask me all the time what kind of CBD what, who to buy from I'm like well you know honestly go look for a QR code um, so you need to be transparent on your packaging too and let them see the data tell me about the seed tell me about the farming let me have that experience with you again what Katrina said educate me so you might not have room on a little label two by three inches to tell me the whole story but create a QR code make that QR code link to a video hey you just picked up this 500 milligram da 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 well let me tell you about how this was made like tell me that story engages me as a consumer that's what qr codes were invented for so use them yeah that qr codes are definitely a good way to do anything nowadays we're all on our phone another way i'd suggest is influencer marketing so you know if you're thinking about a particular audience that follow a particular influencer that's also a good way to reach a lot of people i've got a great company if anyone's interested in doing that um that i've that matches your product it's amazing exactly exactly they have the followers already they have the reputation so One thing I'm going to leave you with, your network is your net worth. So remember that. That's so critical, not just in Texas, but all around the country and internationally. So Carlos, you want to do that? And then yeah. we'll take questions. Ba the basics 101 is uh, uh, your contacts always have to be enlisted in your daily uh, work, your, your topics of following through, your network expanding not not it's not possible if you do not satisfy your network um, it it is very important that you follow through every each each uh, person each contact each customer each vendor as well because it's not only the customers that you have touch every day it's your vendors too your suppliers uh, your bankers of service, uh, everybody. So it, it, everybody has to be informed. Nowadays, we have tools for that. You know, I, I was I grew up uh, with paper, paper tales everywhere. 
but today it's easy to do. It's not a, it's unacceptable not to, to follow through. So and if it's a particularly I important client, I know we're in nowadays, a lot of meetings are done via Zoom because of COVID, but if there is that opportunity to meet them in person, it's old, it's traditional, but really, really works if that client is important to you, make sure that you can get some face time with them. You know, because the energy and, and, and some of the personal things you're going to talk about, you're going to connect with them, you know, that will secure sometimes a client. And look within your network as well. I guess I'd leave that as a last suggestion. Uh, look within your personal network, you know, because we're all connected to several thousand people online and through different various uh, apps that we're more than likely a business owner is going to do business with you if you have some personal relationship to them. They'll pick you over another. So that's also a good thing to think about. I want to follow up on both of what they said because they're right on. You need to get yourself a CRM. Don't write things on a notebook, okay? that You're not professional if you're doing that. So a CRM... You can write it in my notebook till I get back to the office, that right? Temporarily, yeah, exactly. yes. A CRM is a customer relationship management tool. It is a database that you keep all of your B2B contacts in, and it keeps track of your communication with them. Um, I evaluated 18 different CRMs until I found the one that I was in love with. It's called... What you go with? Bitrix24. They're out of Russia and the UK. I love them. They're my best friend. Agile's free and cheap. I like them now too uh, because I'm from the UK. So. You can get a you can get a free version of Bitrix um, if you want, but it, it's a way to keep track of your customers. So if you call them today, keep track. Hey, I talked to Joe. Um, he wants me to follow up on Monday, so I put it in my calendar. I put my notes in, and so when I go back, I can see my entire history about Joe, what my relationship was, his birthday, his daughter went to a park. So, you know, Monday when you call him, hey, how did it go at the park on Monday? or if your colleague is trying to call a follow-up on a customer. I will say this, you guys need to do a little bit of marketing one-on-one -on -one, um, when it comes to products. So think about what your product is. Do you have the right product? What place are you putting it in? Do you have the right place? What Do you have the right price? And what kind of promotion are you doing? It's called four Ps of marketing. There's also something called seven touches of marketing that you guys need to know about. And this is... card here and you're going to touch physically touch my card that's touch two you're going to get an email campaign from me later maybe if i have time probably not but that would be touch three so every time i engage with my customer that's a touch and usually statistically seventh touch you're going to get a sale five to twelve five to twelve is the yep. is the average yeah i agree with that don't forget your local chambers of commerce if you are in business b2b you may want to go visit if you don't join Get to know those businesses, let them know what industry you're in. More than likely, you're the only person in the chamber that is doing what you're doing. So get them to be your advocates. Uh, and even if you're not, you can be the coolest, right? Like you can be yeah. the friendliest, you can be, you're, if you're, you're not walking into expert. an event like this in a year from now and you're in this business and you're not seeing friends, you're not hugging people. Then I mean, there's a problem. -COVID. Yeah, there's a problem. I can tell you, you're gonna do double your business or triple your business by next year. If you just stay dedicated to this. Make business cards. If you don't have business cards, shame on you. you No, it's not. Just educate them about what you do. People are going to be grateful for you. I'm in real estate. It took me a while to tell people, you want to try that CBD? And they're like, what is that? It's going to get me high? I said, no, it's not going to get me high. It's going to be mellow. 50% you know? of them were kind of hoping that they would get you high. You give it to them, then you tell them yes, and then you just watch them. Some and people oh, are very you got lucky. Nothing happened. To, to, and you'll become exactly. a cool kid. Remember, guys, it's the, you know, although it's been around, this is still fairly new in Texas, you know, more than it is California or Colorado, and we have a good shot in this market right now to do a lot of different things, so. You do, you know, and work twice as hard as everyone else yeah. out there, and then they won't call you a stoner. Yeah, the guys in the room, we're going to monopolize Texas. Funny you want, man. 
Tell us, <laughs> educate the audience, what are, what are some of the challenges they're going to see if they're trying to process papers? Um, I would say we've seen that um, groups are getting up and getting boarded, you know, for online or in-store, um, retail store in like one to two days. And then you can kind of tell that that processor kind of hasn't done their due diligence and looked through the company, looked through products, looked through COAs, things like that, um, has seemed to be the... Uh, kind of bigger challenge that we've seen and then people also waking up one morning and you can't swipe a card, people can't buy a product online because you're shut down, terminated, accounts froze, um, things like that. So that's, we've been seeing a lot of that and um, people are just getting led, led in the wrong direction, um, unfortunately, and getting promised things that they can't keep. So we've seen that and um, kind of modeled our way a little bit differently. So um, definitely, obviously a little biased because it's our company, but definitely like how we are doing things over a lot of the competitors in this industry. So. Um, just differentiating, I mean, if you're, if you're talking from like a brick and mortar standpoint, um, you really have to, like what we usually see for like the problem with sales is just how many people went inside for COVID, you know, when you're brick and mortar, it's really hard because you can't just be like, I mean, we started doing, um, deliveries in some stores, drive through, um, we have those in ours and we started to kind of change some of that stuff. I think probably some of the things that you see in sales is just being inventive and then not part of the problem, you know, from our stand is we just don't always know what we can say online. Like we almost got one of our things shut down. I was talking about a different one. We just, I don't know who did it, but one of our store managers who was, uh, 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 like someone hashtag THC by accident. And so Oops. We had like a million hashtags because we know, you know, if we're going to use anything like that. And I was like, they won't stop, but oh, we didn't check the hashtags. It's like, we, sometimes it's really hard, like yeah. what regulations. It changes every week, we feel like, you know, so part of that is just how we can do things online and finding out who you can trust is the biggest thing because so many people say we can do this and this and this and you end up wasting thousands of dollars just trying to figure out who you can trust. Yeah. So if you're here, talk to people that have done it and they like people because then there's people you can trust and not someone that's just calling you and be like, we can change your whole life. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else with any challenges you want to share publicly? Is, is there anybody here that What do you define as successful? Are you talking revenue? Yes. The question was, does anybody in the audience here, uh, has anybody found success selling B2C online only? We have, for the most part. We, we've only been open for two weeks, but okay. two weeks, 220 followers. Uh, How are you defining success? Um, well, I would say within two weeks, no advertising. Um, success would be in sales where I see a lot of CBD individuals that maybe have had their online store for six months and doesn't even make one sale. How are you marketing yourself? Uh, just word of mouth. So it's more in your community, isn't it? Uh, no, it's making that connection. Uh -huh. You know, you you want to buy from me because you know that I did my due diligence and, I, and that I have a product that I can stand behind. Mm -hmm. So you trust that fact that... Mm -hmm. It's a good product. It's not because I trust you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Building that relationship right. with you. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Some of the big trends coming next year are going to be individual cookie makers. They're going to start doing CBD cookies. So you can go buy parties of cookies, parties at home, massage therapists starting to do massages. We sell that CBD. stuff. Very high end. The Houstonian is offering a CBD massage. I tried it. It's like 250 bucks. But think about the smaller massage parlors. They can do it as well with high-quality product. Texas okay. made. So Texas made as well. Yeah. well if you're Texas, make exactly. sure people know you're made in Texas. Yeah. If you, you, you want to do that with me, I can create your base. You can add your own stuff to it. Um, and then all you got to do is call on a Monday to spas because that's when they're closed. You have to understand who your audience is. Uh, if you try to contact them Tuesday through Sunday, they're going to slap you in the face. Be prepared with a pitch. You only have 15 minutes to pitch to spa owners. Yeah, and I was just going to say, too, it doesn't cost that much to become a CBD manufacturer in Texas. If you're sitting here with a couple of tinctures thinking that you're going to launch a business, see what it takes to just go into manufacturing and come up with a product that no one's thought of yet. 
put a cute name with it, put a whole branding package around it. You're going to have a whole lot more success, like you said before, getting really specific on one thing and knocking that out of the park than trying to be everything to everyone. Don't repeat it. I agree. Made in Texas. That's a big, big sales point for Texas. Oh, organic, to organic farming is also an important one that everyone looks to now, organic. Yeah, I want to say something real quick about what she was saying, uh, the whole Go Texas stuff. Okay, um, Texas Department of Agriculture, any of you guys reached out to them? Um, that's a really big deal. Uh, if you go register your company as a farmer, you're all they're all over that. My company is registered with the Go, you know, Go Texan program. That means they're supported by the Texas Department of Agriculture. What that means from a B two B perspective is that you are on a short list when it comes to relationships that they have. I'll give you an example. Um, H E B, really large company. You guys know about that, right? H E B is really in cahoots with um, Texas Department of Agriculture. What they will do is the buyers will go to the Texas Department of Agriculture and say, hey, do you know anybody who does this? And then the Texas Department of Agri Agriculture will say, yeah, here's our short list. You got five options. They're going to contact those five people before they contact anybody else who tries to pitch them. That's actually how we got into H E B. We started off um, with a membership or relationship with the Texas Department of Agriculture. At that time, we were the only skincare manufacturers there. We got in because we support American farmers. We use um, plant-based ingredients in our products. And so they really liked that idea. A few months later, the HEB contacted TDA and said, hey, who do you know who can make private label lip balm? They gave me, I was the only person that they, got, they had on that list. They contacted me. Right now, we're in 180 something stores in HEB with our brand, just because of that Texas Department of Agriculture relationship. So as she mentioned. As far as, uh, just to go on from that, as far as relationships with government and so on, if you're a minority, try to get your minority certification. Yeah, That's good. It's really important because it also you'll find in the future, as this becomes more established in Texas, that you know, there are going to be opportunities for minorities immediately and you know for example in trucking I, I give you a good example in our business in trucking uh, some of the biggest schools like Fort Bend ISD and, and uh, all around Houston they will reserve like 40 percent of their job only for minorities you know so that's immediately if you're on a list on a specific list you know you'll get these opportunities and I eventually CBD opportunities. Yeah, and I just wanted to jump in on the GoTex and label. They also get to use that GoTex and label on their products. That GoTex and label is very popular. You see it in the grocery store. You see it on food that's made in Texas. There's a lot of pride behind that label. There is one organic hemp farmer in the state of Texas, Adrian Garcia, Garcia Brothers Organics, that has that label and a USDA certified organic label on their hemp. If I was a farmer anywhere, I would be getting that. I want to say you are getting into the industry at the right time. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. All of you, everybody, there's 30 something of you in a room. You're getting in at the right time. If you don't double or triple your business by next year, if you stay in this, you can walk out now, but you don't have to because you all are going to do it. Just be persistent. Develop those relationships. Your network, it is going to be your network. Yeah. Talk to the payment processor, talk to the, the guy who owns the stores. If you're producing farming, get to know the farmers. Join Texas Hemp Industries Association. Or wherever your association is in your state. Yeah. There's ag groups all over the place. Yep. Absolutely. Go Texan. Go talk to uh, your representatives. At the, uh, Sid Miller is very big mm -hmm. on doing Texan uh, agriculture, especially with the hemp program. Mm -hmm. If you have some land, try to register to be a grower. Just you might get, get tax exempt license. if you do, too. That would be kind of cool. That? You might be tax exempt if you apply for agriculture, yeah. too. You might. Yeah, you might yeah, yeah. You are. You are tax exempt. Yeah. Do you have any closing statements? No, I, I basically, yeah, go One ahead. One quick question. Does there have to be a certain amount of acreages for the land in order five. to grow? Five. Five or yeah. more. Okay. I was just double checking because I thought it was five. Only awesome. for, the for the agricultural exemption. You can grow for as you small as half an acre for yeah. your... You can grow hemp in a greenhouse in the back of your yard as long as you're willing to sign up and get your application and allow them to search your property whenever they so choose. It's more about your willingness on the grow side. The agricultural exemption and all of that might have the minimum criteria, but you can grow in a greenhouse. Yeah, today, uh, 
it, it was great to be with you to share. Um, my final comment is that um, I don't, uh, I never get exhausted about it. Uh, we are in the nascent industry, just born with, uh, I don't think that we know exactly in what stage we are of our needs in CBD. I know that in Fiverr, humans don't even know 5% of what Fiverr industry can be replaced with hemp. It, it is basically a new world, a new world for you. If I'm not mistaken, you mentioned in May that we are in Texas allowed to grow. Mm -hmm. May of this year, we have been growing cotton since 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we don't know nothing about cotton. <laughs> Fruit so, of the loom. So, That's so, such a great so point. Welcome, welcome to the new world. If you can make it with hemp, you will never make it with other product because it has a brand of opportunities, yeah. a brand of, uh, I mean, everything that you touch can be made out of hemp. Mm -hmm. Carlos, how can people reach you if you want to write yeah, down Carlos' um, phone I'm, number or email, whatever Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't have as many business cards uh, with me. I brought such a, a small amount, but I can, uh, I can share with you uh, this afternoon, I will be here. My phone number is 713-447-3998. You can text me there, whatever, your email, and we can shoot you uh, our website, uh, Columbia Hemp International or Costa Rica Hemp International, or our logistics uh, that is uh, Solution for moving your products. For, for any uh, CBD and THC products, by the way. Um, so, once again, it's 713-447-3998. You can reach me all the time in Seawall in Galveston. Oh, nice. Thanks so much. <laughs> Katrina, what about you? Yeah, um, I have some business calls if you want to come take them at the end, but I don't have too many either. Uh, my phone number is 346-226. 9595 um, and then uh, my email is katrina at columbiahempinternational.com but if you didn't get that feel free to come and grab a con Thank you. you guys write my number down any questions regarding regulation real estate anything relating to that in the Houston market or beyond 972-415-3017 so is that just Texas regulations Okay, um, my name is Dahlia, D-A-H-L-I-A. I have some business cards, and I do have enough for everybody in this room. Oh. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn, too, so you can find me there. My last name is spelled Kalada, K-E-L-A-D-A. First name, Dahlia, D-A-H-L-I-A. Um, you can find our website, bulksavs.com, so you can get more information about what we do and how we can help you guys. Bulksavs.com. Dahlia My face is on the website for speaking. If you click my face on their website for this conference, it goes to my LinkedIn. To Dahlia's point, I'll usually respond right away to a LinkedIn message, at least within a couple of days, directly to you. Um, that's the best way to get in touch with me. Perfect. All of us. Just click on it yeah. and join us on LinkedIn. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're going right. to thrive and prosper. You're going to do great. Good luck, guys. Bye. Bye.